In the stories that are told of me, my name is not recorded. But you may call me Elizabeth. When the stories are recounted, what most people emphasize is that I poured some oil on Jesus, and Jesus said it was okay. Some people thought that what I did was extraordinary, and others, like Judas, saw me as wasteful. What I would like to tell you today is my story, the whole story, and a story about Jesus of Nazareth. Women were not counted amongst the 12 who originally followed Jesus, but there were many of us who, like the others, had left our families and our homes, had embraced a new way of life, and who lived into Jesus' dream. We saw in him promise and possibility for all God's children. I listened as he spoke words of hope to a people in such desperate need of that hope. I watched as he challenged the secular authorities, as he called religious leaders to account, and as he brought to life the prophecies of the ancestors. He touched the leper in each of us in need of healing. He taught old and young alike the Creator's dance and placed on our lips a melody of peace. Not everyone who followed Jesus understood. Some saw him as the chosen one who would lead our people to victory over the Roman Empire and establish again the kingdom where Jesus would be crowned the king. They didn't hear him when he said that he would most likely die because of what he said and did. They didn't hear the other part of the story, where he talked about a new way, where he talked about hope and possibility and new life. But I saw, I heard, I understood. He had been for so long now trying to prepare us prepare us to continue his ministry. But we didn't hear. He wanted us to be ready. He warned us about carrying out what he asked us to do. But I saw, I heard, I understood, and I felt helpless. I wanted so desperately to make things better, to change this reality that we were living in. I wanted to hold his pain and heal him. He taught us that words alone are no good, that they must be accompanied by action. As I reflected on that, I knew 
what I had to do. Oil in the tradition of my people is used for many things, for the anointing of a king, for the healing of body, mind, and spirit, and to prepare a body for burial. So on the third day of the final week of Jesus' life, I came to him. I knelt before him and I anointed him with oil. In doing so, I proclaimed him as our king. I offered healing for body, mind, and spirit, and strength for his continued journey. And I prepared his body for burial. Others couldn't understand it. Judas said I was wasteful, but Jesus saw. Jesus heard, he understood. He said that wherever the gospel was proclaimed, what I did would be remembered. But I ask you not to remember me or what I did but remember the story of Jesus, a story that is marked by justice. He proclaimed that justice would flow down the mountains and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. He promised that there was a place for each of us in this new created order. He proclaimed that nothing, nothing could put out the light, the divine light present in the world. Remember that. Remember him. Remember life and walk in his way.